Hi, Santiago from Upsafe here. In this video, we will learn about item shape grids. An item shape grid is similar to an inventory grid, but instead of having one item per slot, items can take multiple slots. We are not restricted to rectangular shapes, we can have weird shapes like this flag here. We are starting with this example scene here, where we have a character which can pick up some items. If we check the character, we will see that we have an inventory with two item collections, one for our main item collection and another for our equipment item collection. We are using a custom inventory database, which is simply a duplicate of the demo database. Let's see how to add some UI to this character. To create the item shape grid for the character, go to Tools, Upsev, Ultimate Inventory System, UI Designer. Here you will have the choice between your UI Designer schemas. You have the Classic or the RPG schema by default. The Classic schema is what we used in the demo database. And the RPG schema is a schema that focuses on item shape grids and floating panels. That being said, whether you choose the classic or the RPG schema, the functionality will be exactly the same. The main difference will be the UI, visual, and what will spawn once you press this button, spawn and see. This will spawn a default UI specific to this schema. In this video, we will use the RPG schema. So first, we will need to duplicate it so that we can use it. Here we will save it in tutorial, tutorial 7, and call it my RPG schema. This may take a moment. There you go, it finished duplicating the RPG schema. And now we will have two options. Either we will need to spawn in scene to create our default full layout for the RPG schema, or we will be able to create the item shape grid directly from its tab here. Here we have a warning that says that we need a display panel manager in our scene. To do this, we simply need to set it up here using the Create Canvas Managers. This will create this game object with all the components that we require. Now we can press this spawn in scene. This created all our UI that we wanted, including the item shape grid which we can find here in floating panels, inventory panel, item shape grid. Here we have some instructions specific to this layout which says that we have to follow these instructions. So first we need to set the character inventory to the panel owner. So if we go here we can see that the panel owner needs to set the character. Then we can tick the allow the selection when the gameplay panel is selected. If we go here in the prevent selectable the selection, we can allow it here. In the inventory panel, the item shape grid, we can fix the problems. We can do so here in the schema by going to item shape grid and selecting our item shape grid in the scene. As you will see here, we will have a warning saying that our inventory might have some problems. It says the inventory is missing from the item view slots container panel binding. Ignore this warning if the inventory is added at runtime. This is not the case here, so we'll need to go to inventory panel and we can see here that we have our item view slot container panel binding and we'll take our character and put it here. Now if we click we'll see that we have a new warning 
which says that the item shape grid controller is missing from the inventory game object. We can add the controller. Now it says that our item shape grid data is missing. So let's add the item shape grid data. If we go to the character, we'll see that these two new components were added the item shape grid controller and the item shape grid data. The item shape grid controller will monitor the items that are added to the inventory, send them to the data so that they can be stored in a grid within the inventory. This makes sure that all the items that are added can actually fit in the item shape grid before they are added. So now we need to make sure that our item shape grid data has the exact same size as our item shape grid within the UI which is the case here. If we want, we can add or remove rows and columns here. And if the inventory is linked, it will also increase the size. So for example, let's put 10 here. It changed the value of the grid size. And if we go to our character, it will also have modified the value. This is important that the item collection ID references the item collection which you want your items to be added to. Here, if we put none, we will monitor the entire inventory, meaning all the item collections. If we wanted only to monitor the main item collection, we will need to choose main or choose it by the name of the item collection. I forgot to mention that any items that do not fit in the inventory grid will be rejected. But if you wish items not to be rejected, you can tick this option here to no grid add item. We can also add multiple grid data within the grid controller as long as they have a different purpose. It is important here to note that we have a shape attribute name here. This will point to the attribute within the item, which describes the shape of the item. Now, let's see the rest of the instructions. We have here the equipment panel. We have to make sure that the item slot collection is the same within the character and the UI. So here we have a equipment, which points to an item slot set my item slot set which is basically a duplicate of the demo item slot set but which references the items from my inventory database so if we go in the ui here we are referencing the demo player character item slot set and we want to make sure that we are referencing the same item slot set as our character which is my item slot set. Then we need to make sure that the item view slots are correctly referenced, which is the case. Now that we followed all the instructions, the UI should work theoretically. So if we play, play, move away the instructions, we have these buttons here on the left to open the inventory. And as you can see, it works perfectly. We can move our item slot set. The grid is overflowing a little bit since we added the one more column and one more row. But well, that's fine. And as you can see, we can drag and drop. Items cannot be put on top of each other. We can even open our equipment which if everything works correctly, we should be able to drag and drop our weapons within the weapon slot. And here, there you go. So everything works as we expect. But here, our items are added both in the inventory and in the equipment. What if we wanted our items that are equipped not to be shown here? So we can go to the character and here we can take the no grid add item which will add items even though they do not fit in the grid 
and point the grid to the main item collection instead of the entire inventory. So now if we press play, the items will disappear on the left once we equip it, as they won't be registered in the grid data. The other way we could have done this is by, instead of setting the no grid add item, we could have copied this component, paste as new, set it a new ID, and point to the equipped item collection. Make sure that the grid size date data will have enough space for the equipment. So if we press play, we can go here, add the item, and as you can see, it disappears on the left. The only little problem that we have is that once we drag from the right, we're showing the item view from the equipment slot instead of the item shape icon. So what we could do to fix this is go to the inventory canvas and here Instead of using the container to spawn the item views, we can untick this option. And here, we can check our item shape category item view set. Make sure that this is from our own schema that we duplicated at the beginning. And now if we save, we can drag it on the right. And then if we drag it on the left, as you can see, we have our item view, which is the item shape icon. So now we have a fully working UI where I can pick up some items and we have our item shape grid. Now that we have our UI completely working, let's see in detail how the item shape grid works and how to set our shapes for our items. The item shape is defined on each item. So if we go here in the main manager, in our item categories, we'll see that we have on our viewable item category inside the demo database, under item definition attributes, we have a shape attribute. The shape attribute must be of this type here called item shape. This will allow us to create items of any shape we want. Once we added this attribute as an item definition attribute, we can go for example to our flag item, find the item definition attribute for the shape, shape item attribute, and here we can customize the shape for this item. We can add and remove columns and rows and we can tick all the spaces that will be used by this item. We can use a right click to select the anchor of this item shape. Now that we've modified the shape for this item, we can save it and if we go to play, we'll see that the shape of this item has increased and it has the exact shape that we defined in the item definition. Let's see the item shape grid for more details. So if we go here in the item shape grid, we'll see that we have our item shape grid component which references in item shape view content. Let's remove the instructions that is in the way. There you go. So we have an item shape views, which is on top of our item view slot grids. This is because the item shape grid works with two layers. There is the background layers, which use the item view slots, and there's the foreground layer, which uses the item shape views. So once we press play, 
we will see here that these item view slots grids are all the slots within our grid and here in the item views we only have the images or the icons for each of these items. The items scale depending on their item shape and this is all done with this special item shape item view. We can find the item shape item view from the item shape grid, the item view drawer that we're referencing or item view for the item shape grid. Here we can see that we have different components, item view modules. This one is the most important one, the item shape item view, which can activate and deactivate depending on if it's in the background or if it's on the foreground. For the foreground, usually you would enable the images or the icon shape. And for the background, you will usually activate things that are used to preview when you drop an item or when you select the item. There are other item view modules which are really useful, which you can find in the documentation. I hope that this gave you a good overview of item shape grids and the new RPG schema. I'll see you in the next video.